Hello everyone and welcome back to Jack Scraps. Thanks for joining me today for another design team project for Country Craft Creation. For today's project, I'll be using Prima's Halloween collection called Twilight. And I'm super excited to share with you what I've created because what we use today, we are going to be creating a second project and expanding on that. And I'll tell you a little bit more about it as we go along. So let's get started. So here is the project that I have to share with you today. This is a Halloween tent card with a waterfall feature on the back. This is a great way to send off a little memory keeper to a loved one. You can have it be a standard card, or you can even modify it to include the waterfall feature that I'll be sharing with you today and send along some photos to bring joy to their day. As you can see, this is a front door design. I just love creating the doors and I had so much fun creating this for you. I even made a create a door mini kit that will be free for 24 hours. And I'll have that link down below for you so you can go and pick that up. It has patterns in it so you can create this project by hand just as I've shown you here. Or you can even use the SVG and PNG files that are included to upload that to your cutting machine software and then cut out the images from there. In addition, I have a special offer for you today. It is a Create a Door Mega Bundle. This has three different products in one, and I have a special pricing for you today for four days. And it includes the mini kit, but it is an expansion on the mini kit, so you have more door options. It also includes two add-on kits, one for brick and fences, there are two styles of each and windows and additional door decor. I will be using these files for the next project that we create. So I hope that you take advantage of this special offer and pick it up today as well. So the front door measures five and three eighths inches wide at its widest part and seven and a fourth inches tall. I have some side decorative strips here that I strategically cut out of the twilight paper from the diagonal design. I just loved the um, musical notes here and wanted to include that. I also cut out the door panels here, leaving these three cutouts, which I filled with some spider web doilies that I had in my stash. And I just love the effect that that gave. You'll also see that I have added little doorknobs and knockers, and on them I included the Twilight Pearl Accents that was part of this collection. These are wonderful. They come in uh, different sizes. I don't know if you've noticed that before, but I did mention that in my haul, which will also be linked down below for you in case you missed seeing all of the goodies that I picked up for this collection. But they really just make that stand out and look like little knobs. On my knockers, I used some ghost buttons that I had in my stash. I just cut off the back part of the button and added them there instead of lion's heads, and it just makes it so much fun. I used some rose gold glitter cardstock in between my music note paper, and I just love the color combination that I have here with this little pop of pink as our little witch and cat fly by. She is raised on some foam adhesive to give her dimension and dimension to the door. Now I show you different ways that you can decorate the door, as well as how to use this as a top open card instead of a tent card, because as you see here, we have a accordion hinge so that the card can stand up on itself. And even though I'm showing you this project in a Halloween theme, please keep in mind that this create a door design can be used for any theme that your heart desires. It could be Christmas, it could be spring or summer, any design theme that you wish. I do share a prototype that I created in the tutorial. And so you'll be able to have a peek at a different theme design than Halloween. On the back side, I've added a fun waterfall feature here. And this is a great way, as I mentioned earlier, to send your sentiments as well as some photos. On the front, I created a little pocket. I added some more of the pearl accents and one of the little chipboard pieces. I just love this little pumpkin guy. He just reminds me of a snowman and he's just so adorable. And then I cut out the edging of the paper to get the leaves hanging and made this into a pocket 
and I added some of the ephemera pieces here together as well as the little book from the chipboard pieces. Here is one of the puffy stickers that came in the collection and then I added a magic spell to the front of that and you can write your message here on the back of this tag. You could even add a little photo if you wanted to. So that is how you would sign your card. So the waterfall feature has a magnetic closure. When I created this, I used black artisan cardstock, which you can pick up from Country Craft Creations, as well as all the other supplies I've been mentioning, and I'll have those linked down below for you as well. So on the back, I just left it plain so that you could add your photos there and it wouldn't add too much bulk. This flips down. I added a little belly band so that I could use this cute little trim piece that was included in the ephemera pack. This is one of the tags from the little tag booklet from the collection. I just love this little witch, she's so cute. You can add more photos to this area and just tuck them in there with the tag. Again, you have plenty of room on the back for photos. Here I used another ephemera piece. This was the banner and I just thought that was so cute. And here is another tag from the tag booklet. I just added a little uh, decorative foil piece that I had, folded that over to cover the holes. I love this image. But here's the beautiful paper. And that just tucks up underneath there. On the back side, you have room to add two small photos or a larger photo. On the last page, we have a side pocket here where I've used a doily punch to give it a decorative edge and another tag from the tag booklet. Again, you can tuck another photo or two underneath there. And that is our waterfall feature. The width of the waterfall is four inches and the tallest one where you can add a photo to the back measures about five and three fourths inches. So you could probably put your four by six into the last one and then um, add your smaller photos throughout the rest of the waterfall. So this is the base tent card project. I did include a little bonus for you today and that includes a decorative element that can be added to this project to just give it that little decoration feel that you can leave this project sitting out throughout the Halloween season. And here is a look at that feature. What we have here is an extended accordion hinge and this allows you to add decorations beyond the front door. And I am absolutely loving this feature. It just makes it so fun to decorate. You don't have to put a fence on the front like I've done here, but you can add your sentiment and other decorations that you might have in your stash. Now the fence that I use in this design is part of the Mega Bundle and it is available for you there for use. But if you have one in your stash, a die or even a punch, you could add that to the front as well. Now one of the fun things about this extended accordion hinge is that it could be used in place of the accordion hinge that you see here or you can use it as a standalone piece, which is what I've done. That way you can interchange the tent card to be a different design, but still use the beautiful design that you've created on the front. I love the ability to be able to change these out and the fact that you could use this over and over again. So I made my extended accordion hinge out of acetate, but you could make this out of cardstock or even patterned paper. I like the flexibility that the acetate holds and I do talk about that when we go to create it at the end of this video. On the front, I've added a fence that I cut out in glitter cardstock. I just love adding the black fence here just to add a little spookiness to my whole Halloween theme. I've used some of the ephemera pieces from the collection. I even cut down this trick or treat piece just to, so that it would be the right size and added these up on foam adhesive to give some more dimension. This is such a fun feature. I hope that you like that as well. 
And I hope that you stick around for the tutorial that I have on how to create the tent card waterfall and our bonus extended accordion hinge feature. Before we get into the tutorial, I want to thank all of you for joining me this far in the video. I hope that you like this project. Please let me know down in the comments below. I would love to hear your thoughts. And don't forget to pick up your freebie and check out the mega bundle. And if you can't stay for the tutorial, thank you so much for joining me. And I hope that you will bookmark this project and come back and create it another time. For those that can stay for some crafting fun, let's get started. I'm going to start by going through all of the pieces that we're going to need to create this door tent card. And the first thing is the door base with header. So you can tell the header up here at the top by the edging. There is a pattern in the limited time freebie down in the description box below for you. So this measures five by seven and three eighths. To create the tent card, you're going to need the tent card back with header. There is a score line, so whether you're looking at the pattern or the cut file, the pattern will show a line. You'll need to score on that. And if you're using the cut files, once you upload it to your cutting machine, change that line to a score line, attach, and then cut out. It's the same size as the first one. Then you're going to need the accordion hinge, and this is the one and a half inch accordion hinge. So this measures five by four. It has three score lines. On the short side, you would score at a half inch, two, and three and a half. For those using the cutting machine, just make sure you change those lines to score lines in your software. So these are the base pieces to create the door tent card. Now we're going to talk about the pieces you need for the front of the door tent card. The first thing we're going to start with is our header at the top. You're going to cut out one header. There are five inner lines that you need to score if doing by hand, or if you're using a cutting machine, what I did was I changed those lines to be deboss and then I attached everything and cut it out. Now, if you don't have a deboss tip, you can certainly make it a score line. It just adds a nice little decorative element. I hope that you can see that to the header. To decorate the header, I cut out the header top decorative piece and I use the stripe pattern paper to cut this out. I just love the idea of using these patterns. So this is going to go on the top of our header. And actually, I think I'm gonna go ahead and glue that on. Just goes right across the top there. Now I had this really pretty rose gold glitter cardstock in my stash, so that's what I used there. Next I cut out the header bottom decorative piece, which measures five by an eighth of an inch, and the door topper deco strip, which measures five by a quarter of an inch. Now in my prototype, I had been putting the header bottom deco piece right underneath the header, and then I would put my door topper. However, for this particular design, I'm kind of switching this up and I'm going to add my door topper first and then add my header bottom deco piece. And it's just the aesthetic that I wanted to use for this particular card. You can change this up however you like or however you want to decorate your card is fine. That's why I provided so many different options for you. Okay, so now we have those on. And I don't know if you noticed or not, but I did take and use black archival ink around the edges of my cardstock. While I like this color, I did think it was a little 
summery looking, very bright. So I took um, the ink and went around the edges as well as just over the top of the cardstock. I just took my little dauber and kind of went like this around it just to kind of knock back that bright color of the cardstock. Next, you'll need two of the deco side strips. And these again, I cut out using the striped pattern paper. Had to be really strategic on how to do that. <laughs> but I love having the uh, music paper lines because that took the place of the lines that you see in the pattern and the cut files. So if you're doing this by hand, you can use the score lines and score the three inner lines. And then if you are doing this with the cut files, just change your three inner lines to be deboss or score lines attach and then cut out. Now, I don't know that you really want to hear me continue to say that every time for when it's applicable, but the instructions for those particular things are listed in the PDF that is included in the download. So when I add these, I like to go right underneath the edge of all my decorative pieces at the top make sure they are lined up on the edge, nothing's hanging over. And then that way, if I have extra at the bottom, I can just snip it off. The next piece that we're going to put down are our door panels. And these are the three cutout panels. For those using a cutting machine, it'll be easy. You can just get your pattern paper and cut these out. For those doing this by hand, you're going to need two pieces of cardstock that measure one and seven eighths by six and three eighths. These were another strategic cut. I used this pattern paper and I cut it right out of the center because I wanted this pink pattern with some of the gold speckles on it to be the door front. Because I was going to have so much going on around it, I wanted my door panels to be more of a solid color. But you can certainly use any pattern that you like or color cardstock. It's purely up to you. Again, make this your door. <laughs> Now, before I put these down, I wanted to talk a little bit about how you can decorate them. Now, you can use this with the three cutouts and put this down. Because we used a colored cardstock in the back, I think that looks perfectly fine that way as well. But if you cut out the door panels and you use double-sided cardstock, you could take the pattern on the back side and flip over the cutout and then put that back into your holes and use that as your decoration. Because these cutouts weren't a pattern that I really liked, I decided to do something different. But let me give you the measurements for these, for those that are cutting this out by hand so that you can have them. This is one and an eighth by one. So that'll be the top and the bottom. And the center long piece, the rectangle there, will be one and an eighth by two and a fourth. And then you'll just layer those pieces right onto your door panel, centering that, of course. So that's how you would do that. Now let me show you what I'm going to do. I had some doilies in my stash that were spider webs. And what I did was I took the doily and I then cut it apart so that I could take pieces and put behind my cutout and end up with these really cool doors. I love how this is looking. So I have one piece for each placement. So I'm gonna go ahead and add these and then I can show you more of what it looks like. 
Another option would be to use acetate. Let's say you have acetate that has stars or speckles or even maybe a spider web on it. Um, that would be something that you could use. You could use other patterned paper behind there as well. So just think a little bit of some different options and explore. It was really fun to finally decide. I tried multiple different um, acetates. I tried some decorative vellum that I had, and then I landed on the little doilies here with the spider web. I thought that was really great. These are a little bit more tedious to put on, but I think the effect is going to be wonderful. So I took my full doily and then I just cut around what I didn't need. Okay, so there's what it looks like when they're all attached. And then now I'm just going to glue this down. And everything gets butted up against each other in this particular design, nothing is overlapping. You can overlap your door topper with the bottom of your header if you like. Just really all depends on your design. And then I'm going to repeat the same thing on the other side. Kind of lining up my little dots there in the center. The next thing you're going to need are two of the center deco strips. And again, I use the glitter cardstock for that. And these just get adhered down the center next to our door panels. These measure slightly less than a fourth of an inch wide and they are six and three eighths inches long. Next, you'll need two door knockers, and they look like this when you cut them out. I cut them out on the glitter cardstock, and then I cut out two of the little knocker knobs, is what I'm calling them. They look like this when you cut them out, and then I just glued them where this little ball part is. So you would just take that and glue it on there. Now I've already done that because I didn't want to lose my two pieces. So now I'm just going to glue these onto the front of the door panels. This is an optional piece. You don't have to use the door knockers. I just liked how they looked. And I'm kind of centering mine in that little blob in the center of the cobweb there of my doily. You can put these up on foam adhesive as well if you want to add dimension. And then just make sure you kind of get those as even as possible. I think that's even. <laughs> and then I cut out two of the doorknobs and you can attach those on either side of the door. Now I already had these cut out from when I was working on the little knockers, so I'm just going to use those. But the doorknob does have a circle in the center for those that are using the cut file that you can change to be deboss or a score line. And it just, again, adds a little bit of dimension to the cut file. I'm not really sure where doorknobs are supposed to be. So that looks pretty good. <laughs> For the tops of my door knockers, I'm using these little ghost buttons. I just cut off the back piece of it, 
so I could put these down on here. I think these look super cute on there and add some really nice dimension. So I'm just going to use a glue dot to adhere those down. And I'm just putting them right at the top of the door knocker. I want them to be over the edge of this rectangle. Now, if you don't have dimensional buttons like this, you could use some die cuts. I was actually going to use some butterflies. And these are from the uh, Prima Twilight Collection in their ephemera pack. I just cut off some of the white that was on the edge. It was just too much white. And I was going to use those. I put these on foam adhesive. You would put these at the top of the knocker. You know, like the lion's head at the top of a knocker. I love using the die cuts or buttons at the top to give it dimension. But when I started to think about what I might decorate down below here, I didn't want to have this be a focal point because it was really quite large. So I couldn't find the right size in the ephemera. And that's when I found these buttons in my stash and I thought these would be perfect. Look how cute that is. I love it. So there's a couple ideas for you on how to decorate the top of the knockers. Now this is all we're going to do with the top. Later on, I'll probably add a bat or something up here. I mean, you really could even take your butterfly and add it there at the top as well. Just another way of using the die cuts. But I'll finish that later. Now we're going to move into decorating the back of our tent card. But before we do that, I wanted to talk about the inside of the tent card. To attach the two pieces, we would add adhesive to the back area of our header. So where that score line is, you would add adhesive all the way across the top and then glue the two header pieces together. Now I'm not gonna do that yet because I have dimensional pieces on the front and it'll be a little difficult to work on the back. But I did want to mention that as I start talking about the inside of the card. In a tent card, let me get my example. So here's the prototype. So as you can see here, I glued my two header pieces together and then it ended up with a card like this. And this will stand perfectly well on its own without the accordion hinge in the center. So this is really kind of an optional piece. You don't have to do the accordion hinge, but it does make it a little bit more secure if this is something that you want to leave out as a decoration. And that's kind of what I had in mind with these. I just love creating the doors and the houses and leaving those out for decoration. So that's why I wanted it to have a sturdy base, but the tent card will stay on its own without the accordion hinge. There is also uh, another way that to do this is that if you want them to be able to open the card like this and have your sentiment on the inside, then you would not use the accordion hinge. The way I'm doing it today, I'm going to use the accordion hinge and I'm going to add my message to the back of the card. And there will also be an interactive element or waterfall on the back, which I've never really seen anyone add that type of interactive element to the tent cards. If you have seen that, let me know. I would love to go out and see their design. So we're going to be adding a waterfall feature to the back that will hold your message to the card recipient. And we're using the accordion hinge. I'm telling you all this now so that you can decide which way you want to create your tent card. Do you want it to open this way and just sit up on its own? That's the first way. Or if you want to add the waterfall feature to the back and have your message here, I would recommend using the accordion hinge to have a sturdier base for your card so that they can leave it out a little bit longer and enjoy it. So with that said, let's start working on the back piece of our tent card. 
So this is our tent card back with header. We're going to set the accordion hinge and our front of the card over to the side. So you're going to need one eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock. I'm using the black artisan cardstock from Country Craft Creations. I love this cardstock. It's super nice and uh, sturdy, but it's able to be scored and flexible all at the same time. It's wonderful. So I took an eight and a half by 11. I cut four inches and then I cut another four inches. So you're only cutting off a half of an inch that we're not going to be using. So you need two pieces of cardstock that measure four by 11. We're going to score these on the long side. We're going to score one at five and three fourths. We're going to score the second one at six and a fourth. We can fold back and burnish these. And then these are going to get tucked into one another. They're going to become our waterfall. So this is what it looks like. I have my measurements on the front, but you see here, it's a little easier to see with the white cardstock. So this is another great way to create a flat waterfall. I love this. And to adhere the two pieces together, you could take it to your sewing machine, sew along the score line, or what I'm going to use, which is what I did here, was staples. Now I happen to have the We Are Memory Keepers staple board, so I'm going to be using that. I'll use the small one. I don't know if you've ever seen this demonstrated before. I don't really use this very often, but it was perfect for this project. So I'm making sure that my two pieces are lined up where I want them to be, and then I line them up with the line going across the board. So right there. So you take this score line and line it up here. You add the space piece here. And then you take your small stapler and punch. I'm going to take the second one and line it up right before that magnet. These two pieces are magnet. And there we have it. It's really quite handy. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, what I'm going to do is decorate this first and then glue everything down. You're also going to need one set of magnets and one piece of black cardstock that measures seven eighths by three and three fourths. We're going to score that on one end at a half an inch. Just fold that over and burnish. And actually, let's go ahead and add one of our magnets here. If you don't have magnets, you can use Velcro. I'm just gonna center that here, sorta. There we go. And then we can place the other one on the other side, and now that is ready to go. Okay, to decorate these, I'm gonna give you the measurements of the pieces that I'm using. I'm only decorating the front. I'm going to leave the back plain so that photos could be added there. On the front, I'm going to create a little pocket. This was um, one of the cut apart sheets and this measures a little bit different. This is four by three and three fourths, but as you can see, I cut down and around the leaves. I wanted them to be hanging over the edge of that particular piece. I don't know, I just thought that was cute. So I just did some strategic cutting there. But that was four by 
three and three fourths by the time I got done cutting that piece. So that's the top. Next, I'm using the pumpkins and this measures four by five and a fourth. Here's my next piece and this is four by five and three fourths. And the last one is four by six and a fourth. Now, when I cut these, I did not cut these where there was a border around them. For the pocket piece on the top, I'm going to be using this uh, tag from the ephemera pack, as well as the uh, magic spell, and one of the little puffy stickers with the cauldron, and these I'm just layering on top of each other. I just kind of did that willy-nilly. Let's go ahead and layer this down. There, so that will be my one tag. And I'm taking this from the ephemera pack as well. And I don't really like this weird witch on there. So what I did was take the little book from the chipboard pieces. I peeled off the back. You can peel this paper off fairly easy like that. And I'm gonna glue that over the witch to decorate. And I really like that look. I like that that gave it some dimension as well. All right, I got some jute twine that I picked up from Country Craft Creations. And I'm going to use this to tie the two pieces together. So I got about two strands that are four and a fourth inches long. On this particular piece, it has a little clip and I'm going to punch a hole right at the top of that clip where it already looks like it has a hole in it. There, perfect. And I'm going to add these two together. Okay, I was trying to decide whether or not I needed a pattern paper for the back of my pocket. I was initially going to use the black cardstock as my back, but I think I want the twine to pop out a little bit more. So let me get some pattern paper for that. Okay, so for the top of the pocket, you're going to need one piece that measures four by one and a fourth. Now you can cut these pieces down to where they have a border around them. I am just electing not to. It's just all really about the aesthetic that you're going for. So you put down your back piece first here. Then we just adhere our pocket. We glue it on three sides. Going all the way down to the bottom of the page there. And we can take our little tag and then tuck that right down in there. Yeah, that's cute. I like that much better. Adorbs. Okay, let's continue on adding our pattern paper. This was our second piece. Third piece here that measures four by five and three fourths. Always check to make sure I got it on there right. And now we're adding our last piece, and this was four by six and a fourth. Now, unfortunately, when I was cutting, 
I don't know what happened, but I cut it short on the width, as you can see there, <laughs> by about an eighth of an inch. I don't know what happened. I was probably watching TV and not paying attention. So I'll cover that up when I do a little more decorating. Okay, you guys, I always forget about the magnet, right? That's just what I do. <laughs> So I had to lift up my first pocket so that I could get my magnet in there. And I've actually resized this piece down to two and three fourths by seven eighths. And then I still have a half an inch scored. So I'm going to tuck this in with my magnet. there and it'll just be shorter okay I think that's it <laughs> we'll see all right I'm gonna add my magnet here oh my goodness I don't even know if that's center I could take the whole thing off, but I'm trying to make smaller adjustments. Okay, so I've added my magnet. What I'm going to also do is just put a line of glue right in front of it to stop my tag from going down into it. But then this way I can still get my tag in there and it will just be up a little bit higher than it was before. But I put the glue so that my tag doesn't stick to the adhesive tape because the adhesive tape never dries, okay? It never dries. So that's why you want to put that little bead of glue in front of it so that your tag doesn't stick to it. See, no stickage. Hope that makes sense. Okay. Now, that's where that is. I'm going to put this where I think it needs to go. We'll add a little dot of glue on the back here because I always put them on the wrong way. And tap that down. Okay, yeah, that'll work. That'll work. There we go. And now I need some pattern paper to go over that piece. To decorate our little magnetic closure here, you're going to need two pieces of pattern paper that measure seven eighths by two and a fourth. And I did round the corners of all this using the We Are Memory Keepers um, three corner punch. I got that from Country Craft Creations. I love it. And I'm just going to add my pattern paper here. Awesome. All right, I can close the rest of this up. Okay, like it never happened. Now we're going to adhere our waterfall to the back of our tent card. I'm going to make sure I have this in place folding this over and we're going to attach these two pieces together. I've added some glue here on the back side. That looks good. And now those are glued together. 
There we go. I'm like, why don't I hear the snap? <laughs> now we can glue this whole thing to the base of our back piece. I'm just kind of centering it a little bit. I think it's kind of stuck there. You want to be cognizant of the score line. So you don't want to put this on top of the score line, maybe up. See how close I've gotten to it, maybe an eighth of an inch away from it. Because that's going to bend a little bit. All right, so now we can lift these up and burnish this down. I think I did okay on centering that. And you can decorate each of these pages to your heart's desire and have plenty of room to add photos. Tuck in our little tag. So on the back of the tag, you can add your message to the recipient. You could even include a little note in the pocket. I mean, there's plenty of things you can do. Add a photo. Now let's attach our two pieces. So I'm adding adhesive above the score line on the back of our tent card piece. And we're going to adhere that to our front door piece. Just right at the top. Make sure everything's lined up together and give it a burnish. Now I do like to fold on the score line just to help it a little bit. Yeah, look, it's already standing on its own. Awesome. All right, now let's add our accordion hinge. So we're going to take where our half inch score lines are. We're going to fold up or make that a valley. So on both ends. In the center, we're making that a mountain. Now we're going to add adhesive to the back side of our half inch flap. We're going to add that to the inside of either the front or the back. It doesn't matter. We're going to do the same thing to both sides. So just take your hinge, line those up. Always check to make sure nothing is hanging over. And when it looks good, burnish that down. We're going to take this piece and add adhesive to the other half inch flap. Fold that down, bring over the back. And you should be able to just put that right on top of the area we just added adhesive to. So there we have our one and a half inch accordion hinge added. And that looks wonderful. I'm loving it. I love how the back turned out. Having this extra large hinge really helps with the weight of the back side of the card to the front. You can do this with a smaller hinge or like I said, without one, but I really like that size. Now it's time for that bonus I've been talking about and I'm really excited to share this with you. It's another way to help embellish 
or create another hinge for your tent card. So I've shown you that you can use the tent card without a hinge. I've shown you that you can use it with a hinge and that you could vary the hinge in sizes. The next one I wanted to share with you is an extended hinge. Now this allows you to do embellishing outside and away from the front of the door, which I think is awesome if you're going to use this as a decor piece, which that's what I intend to do. So to create that, you're going to need one piece of pattern cardstock, or you could even use acetate, which is what I did. It needs to be six and a half inches wide by five inches tall. On the long side, you're going to score at a half an inch, two, three and a half, four, four and a half, and five and a half. Now we're going to do our mountain valley folds. Let's start over here on the left hand side with the half inch score line that we just created. We're going to fold up, creating a valley. On our two inch score line, we're going to fold forward and create a mountain. So it looks like this so far. On our three and a half, we're going to fold up and over and create a valley. Okay, so now we got this going on. For our four inch score line, we're going to fold back and create a mountain. For a four and a half, fold forward and over, creating a valley. For our five and a half score line, we're going to fold back, creating a mountain. And when you're done, it looks like this. Here is my piece in acetate. And I folded and cut this exactly the same way. And it comes out like this. I know it's hard to see, but that's why I wanted to show you in the white. I'm gonna bring out my prototype again to talk through this next part. The way that we attach this is similar to the same way that we attached our previous hinge. For the half inch piece in the back, you're going to add adhesive here. Now don't do anything yet because I want to show you that you don't need to actually attach this. So if you are attaching though, you would add your adhesive to the back half inch hinge. You would glue that to the back inside of your tent card, just like we did with our first one. Okay. So for now, I'm just going to attach mine with this paper clip and hopefully that will stay. Okay, the next thing you want to do is kind of flip this over. You're going to add adhesive to this area here and glue these two pieces together. So we would have our big mountain and our little mountain we're gluing the little mountain together right there. Then we're going to add adhesive here. You would take the front of your tent card and glue that on. So then you have your one and a half inch hinge on the inside. Then you have a one inch hinge on the outside. Then you would be able to add your embellishments. I only have this handy, so I'm just gonna use that as an example on the outside of it, okay? Now, because I created one and I wanted extra space in between the front mountain and the door, I actually did it to where I did not glue any of the pieces together. I actually left it as a standalone piece, so it's like its own little stand, right? When you do that, 
you actually can create this with the hinge or without, and it will sit in our little extended accordion hinge. You take the back of our tent card, slide that into the half inch slot we have there. The front goes on the inside of our smaller mountain. You see that? I hope you can see that these are lining up. That's why I didn't glue this one down so I can show you. So let me bring this back over. So this is our extended hinge. You lay the back into the half inch hinge and the front right inside of our small mountain. So we have a large mountain, a small one, and then a medium one. So you see those line up, right? And you can set that down. So what that does is provides you a little area here in front of the door where you could glue on your little person or an animal that looks like it's standing out in front of the door, which is super cute and gives you lots of dimension. And then we also have this front mountain where you could add decorations to the front of this. You could put your sentiment out here. What I've done is created fences. I've created an iron fence and a picket fence. Those are not included in the free mini kit that I have for you today, but they are included in the mega bundle and individually. So these can go on the front and look at all the dimension that that adds. If you wanted to do some different layering of creatures or people, <laughs> you have that option and that could be out on the front. So it's the same thing with the acetate piece. I'm setting this back piece in the half inch, putting this over into my smaller mountain. And then I have my small mountain here where I could put something in front or put something on the first mountain. Now I'm going to show you how I decorate this. So here is my picket fence, and this is going to be glued to the front of my acetate piece. Now I like using acetate because it's see-through, and using a fence in front of this just looks so awesome. Look at that. You don't lose any of the door at all. Now if you use a solid color cardstock, that will work too, and it will add a different type of dimension. As you could see here, when we did this one, it will cover some of the door though. Just keep that in mind. I know it's obvious, but I just wanted to state that so no one would be surprised. <laughs> here is the first example that I created, and this fits right here on the front. And I'll show you with the card that I made it for, which was this one. And that's how it looks. Isn't that adorable? I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. And then I actually had a little girl and she was standing in front of it. And I can show you a picture here on screen. So there is a wood fence. And then I just chose for this one, since it was Halloween, to use a black glitter cardstock. But look how, oh, it's just so pretty. I love, I love the whole effect of this. So I cut the fence out and then I also cut it out in acetate. And I did that with both of these to make the fence stronger since it's in the front. Now on this one, I did use thin cardstock, so that made it strong on its own. So I didn't have to use acetate. But for the glitter cardstock, I did use acetate on the back. I just cut the fence out once in the acetate and once in the glitter cardstock. Now I can start embellishing. I have this element from, um, let's see, one of the ephemera packs. So it's from the one with 62 pieces. I also pulled out this little cutie who's from the one with 64 pieces. <laughs> I pulled out the pumpkin cl cluster from the 62 pieces. 
I'm thinking about using this little witch on her broom, which is from the 64 pieces ephemera pack, and then trick or treat, which was from um, 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 um. I'm not sure. I think it was from the 62, but now I'm not so sure. So those are the pieces I'm going to use. And I'm gonna start by putting her down because I know I for sure want to use her on the front of my gate. This particular project, I'm trying to make a little bit more lighthearted for Halloween. And then the next one, I think I did more of a um, witchy theme with that one. Again, it's, you know, Twilight collection. It's not going to be too spooky. So this, I use some 1 8 inch adhesive foam tape. And I'm just going to put her here on the edge. I think that's the way I want it. Let's see. I like doing this because then, yeah, I like that she's hanging out past the door. You know, it's like her mom said, let's go outside and get a photo of you. And there she is all ready for photos. And now we're going to add this on. We're going to put this on flat and unfortunately I do have to cut the bottom of this off, the leaves. And it's probably best to use adhesive tape for this. So I'm using score tape and all my score tape I picked up from Country Craft Creations. At the time they had the best pricing. Now I'm going to try to put my adhesive down first and then put the cardstock on top of it. So I'm just lining everything up. Oh my God, I love the kitty, so cute. Now there's a lot of white on these ephemera pieces, which I'm really not crazy about. So I did go around this one just lightly on the edge with Distress Oxide Black Soot, and this one is Distress Oxide Vintage Photo. Just a little lightly to knock back some of the white. And I think I'm going to put this one, yeah, over. And let's see. On some foam adhesive. Now, as you can see on the front, I did take and add these Twilight Pearl accents. I used two of the large black ones on the little knockers there. And then I used two of the large orange onto the doorknobs. I love that. It's so cool. Because as I mentioned, these have different sizes in there. So I just pulled out the larger ones. What's nice about these is that they're resealable. So you can actually take and just peel these right off the back of the packaging. 
Now you will end up with a little sticky bit, but what I did was just take some of my scraps and put it over the sticky bit and it's good to go. Okay, now I wanted to put my trick or treat on and when I initially started, it was this big. And it's really just kind of too big. It kind of covers a lot of the pumpkins. And that was the whole purpose of adding them so that you could see the pumpkins. So what I did was I took it and I kind of lined it up against each other like this so that I could kind of get that wavy effect. And then I used my scissors to trim it. So I trimmed it down to this size. So it started out this size. And now it looks like that. And I like it much better. See, now you can see more of the pumpkin and the actual sentiment. So I'm just going to use art glitter glue for this, which I also picked up from Country Craft Creations. And I'm gonna tuck that down in there. Make sure my T shows the end there. Yeah, that's exactly what I wanted. So adorably cute. I love it. I could just decorate fences all the time. They're just so fun. I have no idea why, but I love it. <laughs> now, to adhere this to our acetate piece, I added score tape about an inch up on the back of my gate. With acetate, you are better off using adhesive tape than wet glue. When you go to add your fence to the front of your acetate, you want to line it up where your gate is flush with the edge, okay? So these little knobbies that are hanging out over the edge you don't line it up like this. That's incorrect. You line it up flush with your piece. So that's how I'm going to align these. It's harder to do this once you've decorated, but it's all good. So just line that up. up the bottom of my acetate with the bottom of my fence. Now I can show you. See? Hopefully you can see that it's all lined up there. Actually probably put on too much adhesive. So you only need about an inch. Another reason why I liked using the acetate is because you can like reshape this and if you want it to stand up straighter, you just pinch these a little bit more. If you want it to stand up where it's a little bit more spread out, then you just pull out your acetate piece and it actually maintains the shape. So whatever you need it to be, it will maintain the shape. So if I need it to be more standing up straight, just smoosh it down or if I need it to be more out, pull it out. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, I'm gonna have to probably put my little powder on that. I put too much tape on there. Okay. Now we take our tent card, line these up. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. And now, if you want them to still be able to access the back while it's standing, I would cut down the half an inch to be three eighths of an inch. But don't do that before because then you'll mess up all your measurements. Unless you recalculate everything, which you're welcome to do. <laughs> but you know, when it's standing, someone would probably typically pick this part up. But anyways, I love this. Oh my gosh, it's so adorable. There it is, so cute. Now for the front, since you're here, I'll just do it with you. I thought it would be fun to have this little witch flying by 
as if she's flying by to say hello to the little girls out there getting their photo taken. Right? I have a whole story for this. <laughs> oh, I think we'll use black since she's kind of up in the sky there. It's supposed to be nighttime for Halloween anyways, right? Just a little tint of black. And I thought about putting a bat up here, which I absolutely love, but with the ghost, I'm loving this more. She's just saying, hello, how's everything going? I'm gonna put her where her foot is right in between the two doors at the top. And there we have it, adorable. I love how this turned out. I hope you all have enjoyed this. I hope you'll enjoy the free mini kit that I provided for you today and take a look at the bonus offer. I think you're going to love it. There are a lot more options in there and don't forget to pick it up in time to work on our next project where I take the tent card and show you how to turn it into a mini album. And don't forget to post your photos when you create projects and tag me in them. I want to see what you are creating. I just love the inspiration that you give me as much as I give you. And with that, I'll see you next time.